7.4 advanced functions is proving trigonometric identities. Now some people find this really hard. Some people really like them. I think the more you do, the more you will like them. I know that sounds kind of crazy, but it gets to be kind of a puzzle. So I'm going to go over a couple of examples and then um, I'm going to make this lesson fairly short, but I will follow it up with a second um, lesson proving a lot more different identities. So if you have any particular ones from your homework assignment that you're stuck on and I haven't yet done the lesson two, I know some of you are already watching these lessons as I post them. So if you have specific questions you'd like, you can um, send me a little message at the end of this lesson. Okay, so let's go over some of the rules that you should be using when you're trying to prove identities. The first thing is to check to see which side is more complicated. Now this holds true really well for the grade 11 curriculum, but in grade 12, yeah, it's still you're still looking for the most complicated side, but at the same time, um, you often have to work with both sides of the equation to simplify them before you see something that's similar. Work each side separately. Do not move across the equal sign. In other words, you're going to say left side is equal to this and work with that until you get an answer and right side. Break down into sines and cosines. This is a really key point. If you can break it into these little building blocks, you're more likely to see some sort of um, similarity. Often you're asked to find a common denominator. Not asked to, but you will need to find a common denominator. This is common, isn't that funny, common when you have two terms on one side and only one on the other. In other words, how are you going to get from having two parts to one part? Well, obviously you're going to have to somehow add or subtract them together to get this one part. Sometimes you need to factor. Oh yeah, sum and difference of cubes, difference of squares, and sometimes just a basic trinomial. You should use substitutions like sine 2a that you've learned or cos 2a. Sometimes you have to expand um, like the sine of x plus y. You might have to expand that using all these little tools that we've learned in the last couple of sections. Cos squared a plus sine squared equals 1 is often used. The variations on this, you might be replacing 1 with this or replacing this with a 1. And you'll go, oh, that was so easy. Why didn't I see it? So watch out for that one. And sometimes you need to multiply by a conjugate. Be creative. Don't give up. You will get better with practice. Okay, so let's go. We're going to do um, three or four examples. And then, um, like I said, I will dig up some of the more difficult ones and do them for you in a follow-up lesson. So I have sine x tan x equals secan x minus cos x. Well, they both have something that I can break down. This one is all one part. This is two parts. So I'm thinking of those things as I do them. And don't forget to look from left to right as you're working with it to see what direction you should be going in. So I'm going to write what the left side is, what the right side is, and then I'm going to start simplifying. Okay, so I know that tan x is sine x over cos x. So I'm going to replace that. Always replace tan or a reciprocal function by the sine and cosine. So now I have sine x times sine x. Oh, that would just be sine squared x, isn't it? Over cos x. Okay, let's just run over to the right side here for a minute to see what we've got here. We have a minus sign here. So what's secant? Secant is 1 over cos, right? 1 over cos x minus cos x. So now you see how I have only one term on this side and I have two things here. So that means I'm going to find a common denominator here, which of course is going to be cos x. So I'm going to multiply by cos x over cos x. Oops, cos x. And that's going to give me 1 minus cos squared x all over cos x. And, oh gee, isn't 1 minus cos squared x the same as sine squared x? So, there we go. Now, I don't know what your teacher asked you to write once you're finished. In my class, I would have had them just say left side equals right side. 
and you can either rewrite this saying that they're equal. Um, I also used to get my students to write QED, which means quad erratus demonstratum. Therefore, it has been proven. Maybe you want to see if your teacher will let you get away with that quick little short form. Okay, so let's flip over and look at something a little more complicated. So here I have 1 plus cotan x tan y equals sine, look, x plus y. Well, we just learned how to do that. So you're going to be able to break that up. And, well, let's just start with the left side. So I have 1 plus cotan x tan x. Sorry, tan y. And I know that cotan x, now break it into sines and cosines, right? So cotan is cos x over sine x. And tan y, and it's multiplied here, so I have sine y over cos y. Okay, now when I'm at this point, I just keep looking over here and notice how this denominator is already sine x cos y, which I would have here, right? If I just multiplied these. So I have cos x sine y over sine x cos y. And I have a 1. So I'm either going to do something with that 1 or I'm going to, um, I'm well, what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to leave this side and run over here because the right side was pretty complicated with this um, addition formula. So sine of x plus y, remember, is sine x cos y plus cos x sine y. And that's all over sine x cos y. So now I'm going to take a look at the other side here. I'm just going to write this like this first. Cos x sine y over sine x cos y. And I'm going to compare. What's the same here? Well, I've got the right denominator, but I have this one here. And I have this. So look, that's like this. And this one over this is a one. Right? So I have what I need here. Let me just show you how I got that in case you're saying, how did you make a 1 out of that? I know some of you are saying that. I can hear you. Okay, so if I had something like this, and always, I always tell my students to think of a really basic, simple equation if you're not sure what to do. When I have something added together over a common denominator, it's like me saying, if I had 2 plus 3 over 4, okay, so say this was 2, this was 3, this was 4. That's the same as 2 over 4 plus 3 over 4, right? So that's what I've done here. I've broken this, so I have this one, which becomes the 1, and I have this one, which is still this. So now I have left side equals right side, therefore left side equals right side, QED. And that's always nice to write after it, too. Little happy face. Okay, let's go down. Oh, let's do this one here. Cos squared theta minus sine squared theta. Cos squared theta plus sine theta cos theta equals 1 minus tan theta. Obviously, this is a more difficult one, but this tan can be broken down into sines and cosines. Because we have lots of those here, that's probably what we're going to need to do. So with the left side here, I can see that these all have some factoring skills that I could use for them, right? Cos squared minus sine squared, that's a difference of squares. So I'm going to say cos theta plus sine theta times cos theta minus sine theta. Oh, I took up more space than I wanted to. And in the denominator, um, I have a common factor. Right? I can take out a cos theta. What am I left with? Cos theta plus sine theta. Now all these things are multiplied together, right? And once things are multiplied together, you can cancel them out as little packages, divide into each other. And that leaves me with cos theta minus sine theta over cos theta. Now, you can go over to the right side here and break this down, but I'm looking at this and I already see that answer. Do you? Because look, cos theta over cos theta, that's 1, and sine theta over cos theta is tan theta. So 
I would just say, oh, this is equal to 1 minus tan theta, and right side equals 1 minus tan theta. So therefore, left side equals right side. And a little tricky thing, if you get to here, <laughs> and sometimes, don't, don't tell your teacher I told you this, but if you just jump and say, oh, that's equal to this, even if you're not sure, and say left side, right side, she's going to think you knew that. But you should write it down, right? Okay, last one. Sine 2x, 1 minus cos 2x equals 2 cosecant 2x minus tan x. Ooh, that one looks really complicated, doesn't it? Okay, so let's see. What can we do with the left side? Left side. Sine of 2x. Well, the sine of 2x is 2 sine x cos x. And I'm all over 1 minus cos 2x. I'm going to write that down here anyway, even though I know I'm going to want to change this cos of 2x. Let's go to the right side just to see what kind of denominator I want. Because as you know, the cos of 2x has three possible equations that I can substitute in here. So I'm going to go to the right side first. I'm going to put it right over way over here. So 2 cosecant 2x, that's 2 over cosecant 2x is 1 over the sine of 2x. So I have 2 over sine 2x and the tan x is going to be sine x over cos x. Now there's only one identity for sine of 2x and that's 2 sine x cos x. So I'm going to write that here, 2 sine x cos x minus sine x over cos x. And you can see, well, these twos will cancel into each other and I have a 1 up here. And to subtract these from each other, I need a common denominator. So I'm going to write this as 1 over sine x cos x minus, now that means I have to multiply this side by sine x over sine x, right? Common denominator. So if I do that, I'm going to have sine squared x, sine x times sine x, over sine x cos x. And that means this one's going really well, isn't it? And it's easy to see what you can do with this. Now I have 1 minus sine squared x over sine x cos x. And what's 1 minus sine squared x? Well, that's just cos squared x, isn't it? 1 minus sine squared x. Remember, we had sine squared x plus cos squared x equals 1. So 1 minus sine squared x is cos squared x. So I have cos squared x. Sometimes they just flow so nicely, don't they? <laughs> You're probably going, come on, Miss Harrod, this is painful. Okay, so I have a cos squared over a cos. That's going to get rid of the squared. And I have cos x over sine x. Okay, now you could say, well, that's just cotan x, but we're not going to go there because we've got it nicely into sines and cosines. Okay, so if you look here now, you see my denominator is sine x, and I have cos 2x here. So remember that one of the formulas you could use for cos 2x, that was 1 minus 2 sine squared x. And that will bring in a sine x into the denominator, which is what I really want to have, like I do here, because I want, I want to get this to be cos over sine. So I'm going to substitute the cos 2x with this. Don't forget the whole part. And don't forget this minus sign. Remember, most of the mistakes in math are made because of negatives. Whoops, got something under the paper there. Okay, so 1 minus cos 2x is going to be 1 minus, put a big bracket here. Okay, that way you won't make a mistake. 2 sine squared x. Okay, we're moving. So I have 2 sine x cos x over 1 minus 1, I'll write it all out, 1 minus 1 plus 2 sine squared x. 
So now I have 2 sine x cos x. Ooh, getting tired. Over 1 minus 1, that's gone. So I have 2 sine squared x. Ooh, look at that, eh? So I have 2 and 2, 1 sine x with 1 sine x, and bingo, I've got the same as I had on the other side. It was a long one. Left side equals right side, Q, E, D. And I hope that made you very happy. Okay, so like I said, if there's a specific one you'd like me to do, get to me in the next few days. It's um, I've got a lot of company coming tomorrow, so I, I won't be making a lesson for a couple of days. Okay, all the best.